Yes. Now we'll discuss about the muscles of the mastication. First of all, we'll make a diagram of lateral view of the skull. This is lateral view of the skull. In this diagram, this is superior temporal line. This is inferior temporal, temporal line. This is temporal fossa. Here is gigometric arch. This is gigometric arch. This is maxilla. And here is lateral pterygoid plate. This is lateral pterygoid plate. And this is a fissure known as pterygo maxillary fissure. This fissure is pterygo maxillary fissure. This fissure is pterygo maxillary fissure. Here, below this gigometric arch, there is fossa known as infratemporal fossa. So, we will discuss about the muscles of the mastication. First of all, we will discuss about the temporalis muscle. Here is mandible. Mandible. This is mandible. Here is coronoid process of the mandible. This is condylar process of the mandible. This is coronoid process of the mandible. If we make a diagram separately, you will find here is temporal fossa. Superior temporal line, and here is this is coronoid process, and this is a ramus of the mandible. From here, the muscle takes origin from this fossa, and inserted on. Borders of the coronoid process. This is anterior border, this is posterior border, and also on deep surface of this coronoid process. If you see in this diagram, muscle takes origin like this, and here it passes deep to gigometric arch and inserted on coronoid process. This muscle is temporalis. This muscle is covered by a fascia. Here is a fascia is present. You can see this in another diagram. Here is this is coronal section. This is temporal fossa. Here is superior temporal line. And here is temporal fascia, which covers this muscle. This temporal fascia is splits and attached on medial and lateral lip of this gigometric arch. So this temporalis muscle takes origin from temporal fossa. Here, and also some fibers arise from temporal fascia and then inserted on this coronoid process. This coronoid process, anterior border, posterior border, and also on deep surface of the coronoid process. Action of this muscle. This vertical fiber here, if these fibers contact, it elevates the mandible. Action is elevation of the mandible or closing of the mouth. 
and enter action these posterior fibers if these muscle contracts these fibers contract then there is retraction of the mandible which is already protruded so retraction of the protruded mandible so this is action of the posterior fibers so anterior fibers elevate the mandible and posterior fibers retract protruded mandible nerve supply is deep temporal nerve this is branch of mandibular nerve so this is temporis muscle now another muscle that is masseter masseter takes origin from if you see this diagram masseter takes origin from this is zygomatic arch from inner aspect of zygomatic arch this masseter muscle has three types of the fibers superficial middle and deep fiber the deep fibers are vertically arranged middle fibers are vertically arranged and superficial fibers are obliquely arranged making an angle of the about 45 degree, degree with the horizontal so deep fibers takes origin from deep surface of the zygomatic arch and these fibers are vertically arranged and inserted on upper part of the ramus of the mandible and that the surface so these fibers are vertical fibers these fibers are vertical fibers and deep fibers vertically arranged deep fibers next layer is middle layer middle layer anterior two third fibers arise from zygomatic arch on deep surface again and arise from deep surface of the zygomatic arch and posteriorly about one third fibers arise from lower border of the zygomatic arch this is lower border of the zygomatic arch again these fibers vertically arranged and it covers the ramus and inserted on the ramus most superficial these are superficial fibers these fibers arise from inferior border of anterior two third of the zygomatic arch from here inferior border of anterior two third of the zygomatic arch and here is a process this is a process here is a process of the maxilla this is zygomatic process of the maxilla so this takes here is zygomatic process of the maxilla so some fibers also arise from zygomatic process of the maxilla so from here to here this must be arise and direction of the fibers is directed downward backward and lightly and inserted on lateral surface of the ramus of the mandible and also on the angle of the mandible so this fiber is superficial fiber so you have seen deep fiber middle fibers and superficial fiber and action of this muscle is elevate the mandible deep fibers and middle fibers elevate the mandible and also this superficial fibers also take part in the elevation of the mandible and this superficial fibers also help in protrusion of the mandible it also protrude the mandible so action of the muscle is elevation and protrusion of the mandible so these are two muscles this muscle is supplied by nerve to muscle which is again the branch of the anterior division of the mandibular nerve now after these two muscles we will discuss about the medial and lateral telegoid muscle so for medial and lateral telegoid muscle we will make and the diagram here lateral telegoid muscle lateral telegoid muscle has two head upper head and lower head upper head takes origin from here 
this is infratemporal surface this is infra temporal surface and crest of greater wing of sphenoid this is greater wing of sphenoid this is infratemporal surface and crest this is infratemporal crest and this is surface of greater wing of sphenoid so upper fiber takes origin from here and lower fiber takes origin from lateral surface of the lateral pterygoid plate this is lateral pterygoid plate this is pterygo maxillus this is maxilla so it takes origin from lateral surface of lateral pterygoid muscle this muscle and these muscles join to the upper head this is lower head now the muscle is inserted on pterygoid fovea here is a fovea which is present on anterior surface this is fovea so it is attached on the inserted on the pterygoid fovea this is pterygoid fovea this is pterygoid fovea so here on the anterior surface of the neck this lateral pterygoid muscle is inserted here and this muscle is also inserted through the capsule of the temporomandibular joint this is capsule of the temporomandibular joint this is articular disc this is articular disc so through the capsule this is attached with the articular disc phylogenetically this articular disc is degenerated part of this a detached part of this lateral pterygoid muscle so this muscle takes origin upper head takes origin from here in fractal surface and crest of greater wing of sphenoid and lower head takes origin from lateral surface of lateral pterygoid plate and inserted on pterygoid fovea which is present on anterior surface of the neck of the mandible and also attached with the articular disc this is articular disc of temporomandibular joint through the capsule action of this muscle is this action this is protraction protraction and also depression of the mandible this is a only muscle which depress the mandible other three muscles of the mastication elevate the mandible this lateral pterygoid it pulls neck forward and depress the mandible and its another axis is protrusion of the mandible another muscle which has again two head here is maxilla this is tuberosity of the maxilla this is tuberosity of the maxilla this is tuberosity of the maxilla so it has superficial and deep head the medial pterygoid this is superficial head it takes origin from here tuberosity of the maxilla and inserted on from here to here mandible is removed this is the dotted line so medial surface of the mandible is this is angle of the mandible the ramus is body of the mandible so superficial head takes origin from tuberosity of the maxilla and inserted on the rough area present on the medial surface of the angle of the mandible so this muscle superficial head and deep head takes origin from inner aspect of the lateral pterygoid so lateral pterygoid inner aspect of the lateral pterygoid muscle inner aspect of the lateral pterygoid muscle and inserted on the rough area present on the medial surface of the ramus and angle of the mandible here action of this muscle action of this muscle is elevation and also protrusion elevation and protrusion
So these are four muscles. This muscle nerve is supplied by nerve to median telomere, which is a branch arises from main trunk of the main trunk of the mandibular nerve. And this is supplied by nerve to lateral telomere, which is a branch of anterior division of the mandibular nerve. Temporal is supplied by deep temporal, which is a branch of anterior division of the mandibular nerve. Master is supplied by mastic nerve, which is a branch of anterior division of the mandibular nerve. So this is all about the muscles of the mastication. Thank you.